Welcome to Breakthrough. Thank you for joining us. Be sure to click the subscribe button followed by the bell icon so you don't miss any future videos. Joanne and I, when we were 19 years old, we had just got married and uh, we, we, we uh, didn't know what else to do so we bought a house. And uh, we bought this house and it was a $10,000 house, okay? And the funny thing about the house that we bought, it was $10,000 and we had to get a loan for it and it was $193 a month I paid on the house. And uh, <laughs> which seems, seems like a lot, it doesn't seem like a lot of money when you think about that in, these, in days, because uh, we've married a long time, we've married 34 years, so you, you go back 34 years, that was a lot of money back then. But, but today's day, it, it's not very much money and actually $10,000 for a, for a house, you're going, woo, it was only two bedroom, it was a, a concrete slab house and we had to buy this house, it was a foreclosure house and uh, we, didn't, we couldn't go inside of it. Okay, we just, we walked around the outside of it and said, had nice siding, <laughs> had decent windows, the roof looked okay, you know, it didn't look like I was going to have to put a roof on or nothing, you know, at least in the next couple weeks. And so we said, <laughs> we said, okay, so we bought the house. We went to the bank, uh, we, we had a bank closed by now, the bank we went to is no longer in existence, but we went there and we, we signed, signed our papers and we, we got a mortgage and uh, I'll never forget today. <laughs> We went to the house and you know you couldn't get in the house because it was it was locked and they didn't have keys to it so we just i literally had to kick the door in basically come on my house i'll kick the door in if i want to you know <laughs> if you own your own house maybe you kick your own door in but we kicked the door in and i'm going to tell you what came out of that house was something i had never smelled before in my life wow. <laughs> and i kicked the door in and i was like i was like whoo <laughs> and i come to find out you know the plumbing didn't work the the, there was mold, there was nastiness, all kind of rats and every kind of thing in there and a sewer line that went, it was a city sewer, but it didn't work, it was clogged up and they took the, the uh, stuff under the sink out, off of it and they put buckets in there and it, it was nasty. I mean, the, kit, the cabinets were nasty, the, the, the bathroom was black and brown and stuff in the, in the tub and in the toilet and I was like, Woo, I'm just telling you, it was some nasty stuff in that place. And I don't know who lived in there before and how long it had been since they had been in there, but it was a long time and it was nasty, okay? And so we, we just went in there and we got us a dumpster and we just started cleaning the house, okay? We started taking stuff out and we started changing the way the, the place looked. And, and uh, it took us almost a year to, to fix that house up. And uh, we, we actually, it was a really nice little house when we got done. Okay, the smell left, we got the smell out, we got the plumbing working, we got all kinds of stuff going on there, and it was just a great place for us to dwell. Amen? It was a good place, and uh, it was a good starter house, and uh, we kept it uh, about a year, year and a half or so, and we sold it and went on and bought another one, and we kept doing that uh, as we went, and we kept buying another house and fixing it up and, and, and kept moving forward like that. And uh, I realized something, though, that wherever you go, there you are. Doesn't matter what the house looks like, don't matter what the church looks like, it don't matter what the grocery store looks like, it don't matter what the, what the, what the whatever looks like, it don't matter what the workforce looks like, it don't matter what the people do next to you looks like, but wherever you go, you're always the same person in whatever circumstance you find yourself in. And the answer to a lot of our questions this morning is found in answering the question, where is it that you dwell? Amen? So I want to really talk about that just for a few minutes this morning, about where are you dwelling? You know, and I really want to focus on the secret thing. I want to focus on the secret thing, the secret place. Because I asked myself the question, I said, God, I said, is it really a secret where you want me to dwell? Is it really a secret? And so I, I, I started looking up verses that had secret in it. And I looked at Matthew 6, uh, 3 through 6. And it's a story in there about Jesus is talking. And he says, uh, he says, when you do your alms, when you do your giving, when you do your stuff, okay? When you do, your, you know, we're always giving. Did everybody know that? You're always giving. Every place you go, you're always giving. Okay, and whatever it is that you give the most, you should listen to yourself. You should listen to yourself. I have to listen to myself <laughs> because, you know, you know if, if, the other day we were up here practicing and a couple girls came up and they were standing here with mics in their hand and they were like, blah, 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 blah. 
and they go, hee, 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 you know, because my voice sounds funny. I don't like the way my voice sounds. And, you know, uh, I, I have preached for a long time, uh, since the, uh, the in, in back in the 80s when I started preaching. And I remember when I first started to preach that, that my voice sounded weird, but now I actually, I've come, become accustomed to it because I, I hear it all the time. And, uh, and so it doesn't really weird me out to hear my voice, okay? But, but the, the byproduct of listening to my voice, actually, I like the way my voice sounds on a Sunday morning. <laughs> I usually say that on Sunday morning when I'm testing the mic. I love the sound of my voice on a Sunday morning. But, <laughs> but, but you know, the, the thing is, is that we have to come to a place, we have to come to a place where we're willing to listen to what we're saying to fully understand what is in our heart. And if we fully understand what is in our heart, then we can ask God to help us to change. And when he asks us, help, when he helps us, we don't going to like it because <laughs> he's going to make us do things we're not comfortable doing. Okay. And it really begins though, when we, we do our alms. Okay. And, and in verse four, it says, uh, 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 let me just read the verses. I won't, I'll try not to preach on them. Matthew 6, uh, 3 through 6, it says, But when thou doest all alms, let not thy left hand know what thy right hand doeth, <laughs> uh, <laughs> that thine alms may be in secret. I have to not preach, because I, otherwise I'll be four hours preaching to you. <laughs> that thine, thine alms may be in secret. There's that colon right there, right? It's going to further explain what happens right there. And thy Father which, which seeth in secret himself shall reward thee openly. He takes personal responsibility for us. I, I think it's so powerful to think about the fact that God takes personal responsibility for what, what is happening in my life. Isn't that powerful? And, and, and we have to, we have to uh, uh, he, he said, and my father which seeth in secret himself, right? He's like, I'm not going to delegate this to someone else. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take care of you myself. I, I, I wonder if we could just say, turn, turn to God and say this. God, I know that you're going to take care of me. <laughs> Can you say that with me? God, I know you're going to take care of me. Amen. Is, doesn't it just raise your faith a little bit? God, I know that you're going to take care of me. I know he sees in secret what I do in secret. Amen. He knows what I'm doing in secret, and then he's going to reward me openly for what I do in secret. Amen. Which means that I can go to, go to him and pray and not worry about what he's going to do. Amen. I don't have to be, uh, I don't have to be worried. <laughs> I, I tell you what we do get worried about is that when I go to go to him and pray that he won't answer my prayer the way I said for him to answer my prayer. Because see, we want to tell God what to do instead of listen to what he says and then do what he has, has already called us to do. Amen. He, we want, he, want, we, he was looking for someone. Amen. Anyone. I, I'm going to get there. I'm almost there. Uh, uh, uh. <laughs> Can I just read five and six? I'll just keep reading. And, and, and when thou prayest, thou shalt not be as the hypocrites are. <laughs> Ooh, I said the word hypocrite in church from the pulpit. <laughs> Oops. <laughs> okay. Don't be like a hypocrite, okay? Don't be like those hypocrites. <laughs> I, I, I got to keep moving. I could, I could really go a long ways with that one. Uh, but I'm not, I'm not going to. For, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and in the corners of the streets that they may be seen of men. Verily I say unto you, they have their reward. But thou, when thou prayest, go enter into thy closet, and when thou hast shut the door, see that comma there? Shut the door. Pray to, the Father, to thy Father which is in secret, and thy Father which seeth in secret shall reward thee openly. This is, is an important ingredient in our relationship with God. Amen? Make time to be with God. Make time. Make time today. Amen? Make time tomorrow. Make time the next day. Make time the next day. Make time. Make time to be with God. Amen? It's so important. Uh, uh, can I just go a little further? The, the Psalm 23, we know the psalm, right? The Lord is my shepherd, yeah. right? Uh, I shall not want. Do you see, that? see that, 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 that statement, the Lord is my shepherd, is followed up by an explanation that I will not want? Amen? I don't have to want. And you know, have you ever prayed God? I prayed this psalm to, to God a lot. I always say, Lord, you're my shepherd, and it says, you says I shall not want. And so that's why I need this new car. 
<laughs> and, it, and God doesn't open the door for my new car. And I'm like, God, you said I wouldn't want. <laughs> See how I twisted that? I took a truth and I twisted it, okay? And I tried to get my way, all right? He maketh me lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of mine enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup run over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Amen. <laughs> I only read all that because we already know that verse, but I wanted to show you something. If you had a highlighter in your Bible and you went in, I don't know if you underline or highlight in your Bible, but I always do. But there's really just four things I want to show you. The Lord is leading because he's my shepherd. He's leading. And I, want, I, I ask that with a question mark. Is the Lord leading your life? He's out in front. Amen? He's leading. That means I'm following somebody. Amen? That means I'm not following uh, myself. I'm not following my own vision, my own desires, my own purpose, my own destiny that I perceive, that I think God has taken me to. I'm following Jesus. Amen. And if Jesus goes to the left, I'm going to go to the left. If he goes to the right, I'm going to go to the right. Amen. So he's leading me. Amen. That's a question mark that you have to answer for yourself. And then on, on my left side is the, the rod, the rod of correction. God has the rod of correction, which is the word of God, which is, is going to come into my life. Do I allow the word to correct me and my course? Amen. He's, he's on, my, on my left side and on, on his right side is his staff. Amen. That means he has all authority. Amen. I'm going to allow the word to come into my life because I know that God has all authority. Amen. So he's leading me. He's He's got his word, of, his, his rod for correction, and the staff is for authority, amen? He has all authority in my life, and I'm, I'm dwelling in that place, amen? And then the fourth thing is goodness and mercy are following after me, amen? So I'm standing in the middle this morning, amen, of a great house this morning. It's a spiritual house that maybe we're not aware of, but I'm going to tell you, most of us as Christians are looking for goodness and mercy and trying to chase goodness and mercy when we should be following Jesus, amen, because goodness and mercy follows after me. I'm not going to chase goodness and mercy because that's not my, my God, amen. The goodness and mercy follows me. It just comes with me, amen. I don't have to worry about what's going to happen because God is good, amen. He's good all the time, amen. And if I could just learn, honestly, if I could just learn that Jesus is my leader, He's my corrector. He's my all authority. And he's in the goodness and mercy of God, I can't get away from it. All of that's going to follow me. Guess what's going to happen? Guess what's going to happen? I am going to find myself drained out of anxiety. Amen. <laughs> Woo! Come on, goodness and mercy. I, re I reject the confusing doctrine that says that everything that happens in my life because I'm a Christian is going to be good. <laughs> Because everything that happens in your life ain't going to be good. Matter of fact, there's going to be trials. There's going to be stuff that's going to happen. But it's not, it's not important what happens to me. It's important what happens inside of me. Amen? What's inside of me is more important than what's around me. Amen? Because I'm going to tell you this morning, if I learn to build the house, amen, if I learn to dwell in the house of the Lord, I will dwell under the shadow of the Almighty God. Amen? I will have the Almighty God all over me. Amen? And that's exactly what we have to come to. We have to come to that place this morning where I'm willing, where I'm willing to lay it down. Lay it down for the glory of God. Amen. Lay down whatever it is for the glory of God. I'm going somewhere with you this morning. Just hang on with me. <laughs> Just hang on with me. You know, everything doesn't feel good. And you know how I know that? Because I'm a dad. <laughs> You know, come on, any moms in the room? You know, we, we know that everything isn't good because we have to tell our kids no. And we have to say no a lot sometimes. And we got to spank them sometimes. And we got to bring, bring them back, to, amen, to center. Because you know what? You might want to go over there and live like somebody else. But I'm going to tell you, you ain't somebody else. You're my kid. And when I say no, I mean no, amen. And I'm going to think Jesus is the same way. God is the same way in our life. He's going to say no and he's going to want to bring us back to center. Amen. As simple as it sounds, <sighs> this secret house is for us to dwell in. God created it for us. To, it's his desire for us to dwell in the, in the secret place this morning. Amen? He wants us to dwell in the secret place. 